Hello, I'd like to talk to you about a Millikan-like experiment. Why is it Millikan-like? Well, because we're going to do a really simplified version of the calculation Millikan did, where we ignore pesky things like air resistance or viscosity and things like that, and just get to the force analysis of this oil drop. And then after we do that calculation, we're going to do another one, because I think two is always better than one. Let's get it a try. First of all, what is it? look like? What does this experiment um, really do? Here's a good animation from the folks over at King's University College here in Edmonton um, that shows you the basics. Well, you've got yourself a oil drop in a container. It is allowed to go through this little hole in this top plate. There's a bottom plate and they're both connected to a power source. When the uh, ball of oil is dropped, it does what you'd expect it to do. It speeds up because there's an unbalanced force acting on it. Not very interesting, until you apply some voltage. So if you put a potential difference across this field, uh, across this gap, you can see an electric field is created. This is a negatively charged oil drop, so the electric field going down will apply a force to it going up. And now as that particle enters the field, it slows down. This one might even come to rest, and then eventually turn around and go back up. Now what Millikan did was not maybe necessarily try to make them accelerate upwards, although he certainly could have and watch it oscillate back and forth, is he, uh, when what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that field until we get a force which is balanced by the force of gravity. Now how are we going to know the force is balanced? Well those two arrows are going to look the same. The oil drop is going to drop at a uniform velocity and we can see from our graph over here that the velocity time graph is going to be horizontal. And you can play around with it until you get it horizontal. At that point, the forces will be equal, and you can record the voltage to find the charge in the oil drop. This is how Millikan went through and eventually calculated the charge on an electron using a few other techniques that we're not going to look at here today. So what we want to do is figure out how does he know the charge in the oil drop just based on the voltage and the other pieces of info we need here are the mass of the oil drop, which he worked out using some crazy math we won't get into, and how far apart the plates are. So how do we do that? Here's an example of a question where I'll show you. Um, in an inversion of the experiment, we got the mass of the oil drop, we got the potential difference, we got the separation, uniform velocity, which means that these forces are balanced. So determine the charge in the drop. First thing I want to do, just make a little force free body diagram. The two forces are balanced, they're equal. So the net force acting on this oil drop is zero because there is uniform motion. It's balanced. Which means you can kind of just jump straight to the chase of saying the electric force is equal to the force of gravity. Or if you like, you can do a little bit more work and make it a little bit more you know, correct, I guess, and say the net force acting on the oil drop which is made up of the force of electricity and the force of gravity, is zero. Which means you can rearrange this statement to give the negative force of gravity, maybe, equals the force of electricity. That's why they're equal when you look at it from a force point of view. Doesn't matter how you get to this, really, as long as you start off by setting those two forces equal to one another. Okay, so now I think I will make myself some space and actually sub some numbers in and see what we get. Fine, be that way. I'll move everybody over there. There we go. So we're going to go through now and do our calculation. Our force of gravity is going to be expressed using mass times acceleration due to gravity. And our force of electricity, charge times the electric field. Ah, there's a problem though. We don't know the electric field. But luckily we know that this is a parallel plate capacitor. So the electric field, which I'll do in green, is equivalent to the separation between the plates uh, or the voltage divided by the separation between the plates. So we know that number, 7.2 times 10 to the 4 volts is our potential difference and our separation 52 centimeters, 0.52 meters. So our separation is, get the calculator out here, or rather our electric field is Uh, 138,461. Let's write that down. 138,461 newtons per coulomb. All right, now we can do some substitution. The mass of the oil drop was given in the question. 7.5 
times 10 to the negative 15 kilograms. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Technically, that's negative because the force of gravity is going down. But remember also, technically, there's a negative sign here outside of the brackets. So the two negatives become positive. And if you don't want to put the negative in, it's not a huge deal on this problem. The next one, it is going to be. So, you know, just bear that in mind. 138,461. From here, it's just a bit of math to plug and chug through on your calculator. And so... Let us do that. And we're getting for a charge about 5.3 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That seems pretty realistic. That's about three and a bit electrons. The bit comes from the fact that, you know, we don't have a whole lot of precision in some of these measurements, so there's some, some error coming in. Now let's look at the second calculation. Similar but different. In this calculation, the oil drop, same mass, same potential difference, falls with an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. You know, I should have put a negative sign in there saying if it's falling, just to remind you that it's going down. Uh, well, what does the free body diagram for this look like? Well, there's still a force of gravity going down. That hasn't changed any because the mass of the drop hasn't changed. But the electric force pulling up on it isn't quite as big because now there's an overall force. There is a net force acting on the particle. And that net force is still equal to the sum of the force of electricity and gravity acting on the oil drop. I can express the net force, any force really, as the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. We already know the formula for electric field. We already know the formula for force of gravity. Now for the mass of this particle, we're, we were given that earlier. I think it was 7.5 times 10 to the negative 15 it was. And here comes the part that's going to throw some students off. Your acceleration has to be negative because the acceleration and the force are pointing downwards. So that's where the negative sign came from. Lots of students will forget that and then we'll end up getting the wrong value. Our electric field is 138,461 newtons per coulomb. And then our force of gravity. Do you notice how I put in a negative value on the 9.81 meters per second squared as well? That's because the force of gravity is also a negative number. That free body diagram helps you remember that fact, that those two numbers need to be negative. Hey, and now it's just plugging and chugging from here. So let's give it a shot, see if we can type it into our calculators. All right, so there's my left-hand side. Now I'm going to add this term. It's a negative term when I multiply those two numbers. I'm going to add it to move it to the other side. All right, that is the electric force that I have now. If I divide it by my electric field, I'm going to get my charge. There we go. It's about 4.7 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. All right, so just, just a little under four electrons. So there you have it, two Millikan problems. If you've got problems with Millikan's problems, check out my website, www.ldindustries.ca. There's more information about it there.